Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. I, I always thought it was just a way of, of God separating his people, right? We don't eat that. So that's a marker that I am a believer of God. Is that correct? Dr. Eric. Ooh. Oh, okay. Here we go. We got some Old Testament law trivia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exodus 25 verse 4 says, do not muzzle an ox while it's treading out the grain. And then Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 and 10, he quotes that law and he says, do you really think it's about oxen that God's concerned? carrying out the work of God. And so God is putting in that law and it's only from the revelation of Jesus that we're able to understand that. So now carry it over to pigs, okay? What does Jesus say about pigs in the time of the first coming? In Don't Matthew give chapter pearls seven, to them. Exactly. In Revelation 22, verse 14, it says, those who wash their robes have the right to enter into the holy city. But those on the outside, they do not. Outside are the dogs, those oh. who practice magic arts, You're right? The idolaters. You, uh, Instructor Aaron. Because God has been using figurative language from the very beginning. I have, I have a question, Instructor Aaron. So, yeah. so we're talking about the, the the four living creatures, right? So so the cherubs, you know, the cherubim, um, and the the seraphs, right? That were mentioned in Isaiah. Um, so are there only four? Are there angels or living creatures? So the the four living creatures. So these archangels. Are there only four archangels? Yes, according to Revelation four. Okay. Yeah, but there are thousands upon thousands. Like if you look at Revelation 5, 11, the angels of God number thousands upon thousands, mm. 10,000 times 10,000. You know, that's so much easier to say in Korean, by the way. What chun, chun, man, man. Chun, chun, man, man. That's it. That's it. That's, you know, thousands upon thousands, 10,000 times 10. You know, that's a mouthful in English, but in Korean, chun, chun, man, man. Chun, chun, man, man. So simple, it's right? hilarious that you said that, but you're right. You sometimes I have some like freelance translation work that I have to do, and that's a big realization all the time. Like it really doesn't have to be this long. Like yeah. why is this so long? And in Tagalog, um, it's even longer, right? Like going from it's even. Oh. It's, I've noticed it's even longer than English a lot of the times. Yeah, that is so funny. Could be. So yeah, you're right. There's the four that are created, and the reason is because here on Earth everything's going to be created according to what's in heaven. So here on earth, there's actually a structure inside of God's kingdom where you have the four main groups of people, the four main groups of people. Mm. So if you guys want to get a little bit into like actual fulfillment, like the fulfilled reality of what's happening here on earth, inside of Shin Ji, there is a structure, right? There's a structure just like in heaven. Okay. You have the one who is, you know, sitting in that place of judgment, if you will, that would be the chairman. You have the 24 department leaders, which are like the 24 elders. You have the seven educators, which are like the seven eyes or the seven spirits of God. They are in the position of educating all of you know, the saints. Then you have the, the four main groups, which is the men's, women's, elderly, and the youth. So I should start with elderly first, you know, elderly, men's, women's, and then the youth. Because everybody that's a part of the, you know, the church, you're something, right? You're either you know, older or younger, yeah. male, female, you know, that type of thing. So they're put in this group in order for that structure to exist. And then within those groups, there is, you know, other groups as well. On top of that, because of Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, it says that you will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And then in Revelation 21, the holy city, New Jerusalem has the 12 foundation stones. We also, in Revelation 7, you have the 12 tribes. So we also have the 12 tribes as well within, you know, the creation of, you know, this kingdom. So those four living creatures, when you talk about the types of faces, they have a very specific purpose. But again, I don't know if that's too much maybe mm -hmm. going into right now. Mm -hmm. So I could probably maybe leave that a little bit for later. But that has a very important purpose here, you know, on earth as well. Each one of those faces represents something that, you know, those, those angels have the ability to do. So, Sorry, I have another question about that. Uh, yes. Okay, so earlier you said that uh, that Satan or Lucifer was one of the seraphs. Is that correct? Yeah, he was one of the four living creatures at one point, or one of the cherubim. Okay. So, so okay. So my question is, it's sort of a logistical one. So was, does that mean that there was a fifth one before, or did, or when he left, no. his place was taken? <laughs> exactly. Recreation <laughs> makes yes. total sense, though. No, no. Yeah, it's a good question. Recreation. I love it. I have a follow-up question to Justin's. Like, you know, angels back then, Instructor Aaron said, you, you said that they they had a very specific 
task, which is to carry out God's will. Hmm. Did any other angels have other jobs? Like, well, all know. of them do. They all have a task to do, whether it's, you know, ministering to people. You can look in like, um, I think it's Matthew 18 that says, you know, don't, don't look down on any one of these little ones. Their angels see the face of God. So the angels are with us, like right here, right now. There's angels with Ooh. each one of us watching everything that we're doing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's real. You know, yeah. I mean, if, you believe in God, <laughs> like... if we truly believe in God, we have to believe that that's the truth. That's the reality. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, this is super valid question. <laughs> it is that does that mean i'm sinning instructor aaron if i kind of don't believe in angels yet like I am say, i committing a sin to god like or is, i wouldn't I say offense? sinning but just in process of learning maybe you know what yeah. i mean like but let's talk about that a little bit i mean because tina is like when we started doing this podcast she was the one who wanted to do the bible study and she got super into the bible and i mean she's basically miss is that in the Bible? Because if it's not, then I don't know. Nah. Yeah. yeah. So imagine that, that, Justin. Yeah. I love so it. what is this ch- struggle that you're having with angels? Why is that hard to believe for you? Because it is in the Bible. Well, now that they don't have wings. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <even> <laughs> I didn't mean to take that from you. I didn't mean- no, no, no. <laughs> no, but that is kind of mind blowing, Instructor Aaron, because yes. um, growing up, I mean, like, please edit my face out because I know you're going to watch this. <laughs> you saw my jaw dropped a few times. But uh, it's just, um, I feel like a lot of, I don't want to say fate. I mean, a, a lot of what I thought my fate was made of is kind of like confusing now. Because mm. you guys know where I'm coming from? Lisa? Yeah, I'm yes, learning these, this, these wonderful new, um, okay, I guess the truth that's being revealed to me now is just, yes, you're, you may be right. Instructor Eric, it may be a little too much to take in. And that's why I'm taking the Bible classes, but going back to Sam's question, I still have a dilemma about angels. Why? You know what's interesting is you're not alone when it comes to that. I mean, even back in the time of the first coming, you had the Pharisees and you had the Sadducees. And the main difference between the two was that the Pharisees believed in spirits and resurrection. The Sadducees did not. So they mm-hmm. didn't believe in spirits either. But when then you have Jesus who talks about angels, that he has, you know, these legion of angels that he can call at any given time. Yeah. In uh, John chapter one, you know, the angels were descending, ascending and descending on the son of man. So they were coming and going, you know, from him, like those birds inside of a tree, right? That's why the birds are like spirits. But when you look at the Old Testament, if you go back in history, really far back in history of Ju- the time of Judaism, they didn't always depict angels with wings either. They never thought of them really as that. So this became a lot during the Renaissance and things of that nature. That's where it became very you know, prominent, where you had these depictions of angels with wings and stuff like that, um, you know, or the ones with their wings ripped off or things of this nature. The wings themselves, they have a purpose. The reason God makes them look like something is to teach us something, right? How does God teach us about spiritual things? Things that we cannot see, we cannot touch, we cannot taste, we cannot smell. How does he allow us to understand? Through physical he uses, things. Exactly. Romans chapter one, verse 20, right? Romans chapter one, verse 20. It says that God uses the physical things of the world, right? The, the things that are visible to help us to understand the invisible qualities of God. The things that we cannot see. Okay. Yeah. So why do they have these, you know, wings if they don't need them to fly? Why do they have six of them, right? Or four in some cases and two arms instead. If you think about what an arm does, imagine us as being the, the body of Christ, right? God, uh, you know, God is the head or Jesus would be considered as the head right here on this earth. Jesus was the head. We are the body. But what are the, what are the hands and feet meant to do? They're meant to do the work, mm-hmm. right? Like Isaiah is it isaiah 52 verse 7 i think it's 52 7 where it says how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news oh that's a beautiful on the mountain one. beautiful yeah. one, right mm-hmm. the feet of those that bring good news so your feet represent like the gospel that's why in the armor going back to the armor of god your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospels of peace right because that's what you're supposed to do carry that word you know out 
So our, mm. this is actually, you guys want to, I'm going to throw a little weird one at you. This is actually why We've certain hit animals. We've the weird quota like yeah. 30 minutes ago, but fine. Go ahead. This is actually why certain animals God did not allow us to eat with like, that did not have split hooves. You know, there's reasons why there were these things in the law. It's not just random that God made them eat or not eat certain things. It had a lot to do with, you know, the feet, being able to discern between good and evil. The feet? Oh. Yeah. That, okay. So oh. are you talking about those super detailed, like, um, super, super detailed laws? Yeah. That the Jews had to observe yeah. and do not yeah, eat it, animals that, mm-hmm. that chew the cud, but do not have, you know, uh, cloven hooves. Do you can eat the animals that do have, you know, that, that, that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Mm. hooved feet, right. They were not supposed to eat animals with that kind of feet with certain ones that either did or did not chew the cud and did or did not have the hood feet. You know, it's, it's very interesting. And each one of those, the law itself has deep spiritual meanings. I, I always thought it was just a way of, of God sort of, separating his people right like okay yeah we don't eat that so that's a marker that i am a believer of god is is that correct okay so because the uh, it was in a recent (laughs) episode where we like talk was we were talking about food and like what we eat and Mm -hmm. stuff yeah but i do remember that there's a verse and i think jesus said this where there's nothing dirty that goes inside you it's the stuff that comes out of you that's exactly right Mm -hmm. so I mean, Matthew chapter se- or Mark chapter seven was one of them, I think. And then I think that so was. So I, I don't know. So maybe I mean maybe Old Testament times God did mm. that, like to do something, like you know, to separate the people or whatever. But and then like come the time of first coming, things turn spiritual, and so yeah, it's not about the physical stuff that you eat. It's more what is it, Instructor Aaron? It's teaching. That's mm. really all it is. It's that it's God hiding the certain truth until the proper time and teaching His people. To where he can use those things in the future. I'll give you an example. Pigs. Bacon. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. Uh, do not eat pork. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, that's a big thing. Do not eat swine. Right? There's still Christians today that don't, they won't eat it just because it was a law in the Old Testament. Um, Muslims today do not, you know, eat it. They, pork, there's, a, yeah. there's quite a few, right, that mm-hmm. don't. Uh, the Jews it themselves, you know. Now, Why? Why was that important? Some people claim because they're, you know, filthy animals and he was trying to keep them from being, you know, sick, I guess, if you will. Um, but if you keep a, a pig clean, they're clean. We used to have a pot pig in our house when I had a roommate, you know what I mean? They're clean. If they're clean right? It was really smart. They knew exactly where to eat and knew exactly where to poop. It's like, it, it was really, they're very, actually very really intelligent, but um, that's a whole nother. Now, why are they, why could they not eat them? Well, they, they didn't chew the cud. That was one of the, the laws that was there because they don't chew the cud. So there you go. Um, but then you look at what does a pig represent? Okay. So now taking a law, let's just take a law. For example, um, Exodus 25 verse four says, do not muzzle an ox while it's treading out the grain. Okay. Do not muzzle an ox. That's a law, right? So you got to ask, why would God care if they're muzzling out? The, let him basically he's saying, let him eat while he's doing the work. You know, don't muzzle him while he's carrying, while he's treading out the grain, let him eat some. Mm. And then Paul in first Corinthians chapter nine Verse 9 and 10, he quotes that law and he says, do you really think it's about oxen that God's concerned? He says, actually, no, this is for us. Because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in sharing some of the harvest. So Mm. it's the same with us. If we're doing the work of God, then we should benefit from that work. Not Mm. saying that we should get rich off of it. That's completely opposite. Mm -hmm. But that we should be taken care of for doing the work of God. Yeah, that's what he's saying. And then he and then he goes, well, I've never I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. Right. I, I boast that I'm going to I'm going to take care of myself no matter what. Right. That's why he was a tent maker and all that. But point being, the law itself, that little itty bitty law was something so profound. The oxen represents people. It represents the workers of God carrying out the work of God. And so God is putting in that law. And it's only from the revelation of Jesus that we're able to understand that. So now carry it over to pigs. OK, what does Jesus say about pigs in the time of the first coming? In Don't Matthew give chapter pearls seven, to them. Exactly. Mm. Why? Very good, Sam. <laughs> Very good, yeah, Sam. Right? Finally, some applause <laughs> on the show. Gosh. I love that. I love it. So, but why? What is what is Jesus actually saying at that moment, right? He's talking about not judging and things of this nature. And then he says, do not give what is sacred to dogs 
or throw your pearls to pigs mm. because they will, you know, trample them under their feet, turn on you and basically rip you to pieces. So he's talking about people, right? He's not talking about literal pigs and literal dogs. He's saying, don't give what is, what is the most sacred thing that we have? It's God's word, right? The pearl of wisdom. When you look at Matthew 13, yeah. the pearl of great wisdom, that's the word of God that they find in the field, right? Mm -hmm. And then you carry that over to, to Peter. Now, remember the disciples, they knew the figurative language. That's why they talk in this way. But this knowledge has been sealed and hidden for 2000 years, which is why people don't remember what was spoken, but it's always been in the Bible. It's always been there. You go to second Peter chapter two, verses 20 to 22. And it says someone who has tasted the, the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, right? Has overcome the world. They have left the world. They have become a person of God and are again entangled in it. They're worse off than they were at the beginning. It's like a dog returning to its vomit and a pig that is washed goes back to wallowing in the mud. So what do dogs and pigs represent? They represent betrayers. Mm. They represent betrayers. So why would you give the most precious thing, which is the word of God to betrayers? What are they going to do with it? They're going to trample it. And then they're going to turn around and rip you to shreds, calling you a cult, evil, Beelzebub, whatever else. So now take that back to why God doesn't want us to eat pigs. Think about in John six, what does Jesus say about his flesh? Eat it eat my flesh. <laughs> but what does that really represent? He says, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken are spirit and they are life. So Jesus was the word made flesh. Eating the flesh of Jesus was accepting his word. Mm -hmm. If you accept a betrayer's word, you're eating their flesh. <gasps> you're eating a pig. You're eating a, a dog, if you will, but you're eating a pig. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that's why he said, oh, don't eat, you know, pigs. It's the same thing with like shellfish or things like that. They are the, they, they feast on dead things in the sea. That's why they call them the cockroaches of the sea. If you think about like lobsters, lobsters were never yeah. like a, they weren't a delicacy until recently, right? They were actually just, they were like gross, you know, yeah, at one point, yeah. but they feast off of dead things. Mm. So they're eating dead things, which means you don't eat that. You don't eat something that is living off the dead, you know? So this is that stuff we talk about where in the old testament everything i mean most of the things if not everything it was all physical and then there's a transition to things being spiritual during the time of first coming and then onwards to the time of revelation yeah so and there are so many of these intricate laws in the old testament bible and so you're saying every single thing in there actually has a spiritual meaning yeah think about that <laughs> one of them was don't plant two seeds in the same field why? Look at Matthew 13. What does Jesus say? The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows good seed in his field. And then while everyone is sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Don't wear two woven, don't wear uh, materials with two woven clothing, right? Two different materials. Mm -hmm. Well, what does clothing represent in the Bible? No, mix and match. Ugh, boring. So I know, right? <laughs> you know, I don't like wearing the same thing, right? But if you think about it, Revelation chapter 19, verse 8, the clothing represents our actions. So don't be like two-faced or like, exactly. you know, hypocritical. Mm. <gasps> don't accept two different teachings. Don't have two different actions where you are a hypocrite, where you say one thing, but act another. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Throw one at us and we'll guess what it means. Go on. Physical. Go on. <laughs> Physical. Game show. Game show music, Justin. Come on. Oh, nah, Justin. Go uh, ga Game show. Game show. Game show. Game show. All right. Okay. Here we go. This is fun, you guys. Instructor error. Oh, okay. Here we go. We got some Old Testament law trivia. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is getting, you know, it's getting, um, it, it's kind of going all over the place, but I just really <laughs> wanted to show you guys that this is how God, you know, this is how he works, right? So you're not wrong in saying that he was separating his people, right? You're not wrong in saying that he was doing that too. He was yeah. making them special, but he wasn't, it, it's not like superfluous it's not extra it's not something that is unnecessary everything that god did he uses mm -hmm. so all the laws it says like in galatians the law was put in place to lead us to christ mm -hmm. right so that's the purpose of the law including all those little things yeah i mean of course god wouldn't put something in there that doesn't really need to be there you know why would he do that right he's all about detail and precision and all that stuff um, here's a here's an it's okay revelation 22 
Okay, Revelation 22, verse 15, it says, outside that this is like what we just talked about will help you guys to understand this. And nobody really ever does. In Revelation 22, verse 14, it says, those who wash their robes have the right to enter into the holy city. But those on the outside, they do not. Outside are the dogs, those who oh. practice magic arts. <laughs> You're right? The idolaters. That, Instructor Aaron. <laughs> Why does God hate dogs so much, right? Of all the animals that he could kick out of heaven, why dogs? I mean, come on, Tina, you love, you know, dogs, man, you know, but it's not because of that at all. Like, if you think about it, right, it has nothing to do with physical dog. I mean, that's why they make these movies, all dogs go to heaven and things like mm. that. <laughs> but what does a dog represent? Someone who betrayed, someone who turned exactly. away from the teaching, yeah. the faith. And that's why they're grouped in with the liars, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, Daughters. all those that love and practice falsehood. Yeah, because God has been using figurative language from the very beginning, from the very beginning, you know, and all that was being fulfilled at the time of the first coming, but it's all leading to the time of today. And all this is being taught. Everything that I'm teaching, I did not think of any of these things. It's not anything that I study the Bible and said, ah, this is what it means. Everything that I'm teaching has been a direct teaching coming from the chairman who has received this knowledge through that open scroll. That's why he understands it in this way. Meaning this understanding has been given to him by God. Exactly. Right, Instructor Aaron? Yeah, he did not figure it out, right? He didn't read the Bible a hundred times and say, ah, this is what it means. Everything has been revealed. The fact that the reality of these things appear, then you can know the reality. And by doing that, it's like unlocking, right? Revealing the truth. That's why it's called revelation, to open and show, right? To open and show. So, and so now, yeah. Short of saying, Instructor Aaron, it's like if the physical entity or the actual entity wasn't revealed, then Chairman Lee would have no way of explaining. N nobody would. Yeah. That's why nobody's understood. It wouldn't it make sense. Exactly. It wouldn't make sense. Ah, oh, then we're just going to go in circles, you guys. Yeah, which is why there's thousands of commentaries, right? Thousands of different understandings on what it could be, right? It could be this, it could be that. And that changes throughout history because new things come. Like today, we're talking about cryptocurrency. That didn't exist 15 years ago. So it couldn't have had anything to do with Revelation, right? The mark of the beast, the European Union, that's grown and, and lessened, you know, the most powerful nations they consider to be the seven heads that didn't exist. You know, I mean, there's so many commentaries that have been on there and all they're doing is they're adding their own thoughts to it. And that's really, that's, you want to talk about Tina, when you said you don't believe in angels yet, that's, that's just you coming to an understanding, right? You just need to learn because that's where faith comes from. Faith comes from hearing. That's what it says in Romans 10, right? Faith comes from hearing the message. But if you're adding your own thoughts, proclaiming it as the truth, that's a sin, a very powerful sin, actually. Revelation chapter 22, oh, verse 18 and 19. Yeah. Anyone who adds to these words of prophecy, mm. the plagues will be added to them. Why? Because it has to be a balanced scale. It has to fulfill according to the scriptures or who can believe it. And if you add your own thoughts, then people could believe in, the, in your understanding. And then when the truth comes, nobody wants to believe in it. Right. Yeah. So... Yes, Justin. Yeah. Uh, I love the raising of the I do that I know, too. Right? I totally do that, man. I was like. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who are listening, uh, I raised my hand. It's, it's, it's so I could visually Such let them know that I had a question. Too. Yeah. For those of you on Spotify. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to ask uh, because I, I guess I don't know too much about this. Um, who, who was Chairman Lee again? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I probably should have prefaced that. Right. Well, again, you can go back and, and mm -hmm. look from the beginning and. If you do look online, you're not going to find good things. You're just not, mm -hmm. right? It's going to be very bad. A um, lot of, I mean, I'm just, I'll just say it straight out. Majority of every single thing that you read is a lie. It really just is. I mean, I've been living this in my life for almost 20 years now. You know, I'll tell you straight, you know, as I say from, from other people, from the horse's mouth, if you will, you know, but he is a person. Okay. He grew up uh, just as a farmer. A nobody really in Korea. He didn't have a lot of education because there wasn't the ability to have it at that time. He grew up during, you know, he was born in uh, 1931. So he grew up during World War II. Uh, grew up, he fought in the Korean War. 
on the front lines. He was um, special, special army and as far as that's concerned. Uh, watched a lot of horrific things, which is why he's dedicated his life to, you know, kind of rebuilding his country in peace. Mm -hmm. um, he is currently like, I think, 91 years old, 91 years old, but speaks as if he's like 50. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. The power that he speaks with is on, he's traveled the world 31 times over the last like few years uh, doing the work of peace. Um, he is a person that grew up in a, a family where the grandfather was somebody who actually prayed to God. They never went to churches, but he, and this is really, this is very rare in Korea at that time. Mm -hmm. And he would pray to God, just looking up in heaven. And he says that he used to watch his, his grandfather pray like that. Mm -hmm. Well, his grandfather, before he was born, and you can read all this stuff. This is like the history, but before he was born, his grandfather had what's called a conception dream, where it was kind of like a, a vision, like a vision, is, if you will. This mm -hmm. is a thing in Korea. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. saw a light coming down on the belly of his daughter. And so he named him. Uh, he that's what the that's what in Chinese character that's what it means so E man he he is his last name so man he is his first name that's just how they do it in Korea too the last name is okay. always first right yeah. and so then he grew up just in this way of learning how to pray in that way but never went to church mm -hmm. in like any kind of formal setting when he was you know a little older there was this vision that he saw of this great star now you can read all these things and I know it's going to sound fantastical to people but he this is his testimony so this is what he saw there was a star that followed him around. It was very large for a few days. And so he ran into the house to tell his father because he'd never seen anything like this. So his father came out and saw it and was like, wow, this is a huge star. It was like a couple meters across. And there's also a saying inside of you know Korea, when someone sees something like a great light, a great man has been born is what they say. Mm -hmm. So this, this star later in his life, it led him to a place where he actually dedicated his life to God. He wrote like a, he basically wrote a uh, like a pledge, an oath in his mm -hmm. own blood saying, I will dedicate my life to God. Solid. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And so that his whole life was just being wanting to be with God mm -hmm. his whole life. And then later he's shown this vision that led him to what's referred to as the first tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where we get into actual fulfillment. So if you want to know much more about this, mm -hmm. again, this is something you really have to, I, I highly suggest actually learning the figurative language first, learning about revelation, then getting into the physical fulfillment, but it's all there. So this tabernacle he's led to, and that's where he learns, you know, from these, what's referred to as the seven stars, the seven messengers. They are the seven stars, the seven lampstands that's uh, spoken of in Revelation chapter one, verse 20. They are the seven stars, which are the seven mysteries. They were in Jesus's right hand, but they, you know, they betray. And as a result of that, he's chosen to be able to reveal their betrayal. So the rest of Revelation being fulfilled is all the events that take place in that tabernacle, him being chosen to actually speak this fulfillment, this revelation, showing them the betrayal, showing them the destruction that's happening, and now creating God's kingdom here on this earth. And when this began, you know, when this began, of course, nobody was you know, wanting it to be spoken. So it was a really, it was a very traumatic and, and, you know, time of turmoil, especially during the 1980s here in Korea. Sorry. So we're still talking about Chairman Lee. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so Shin -Chan instead of getting into all the details, I, yeah, I think I should yeah. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Shin Chun Ji's testimony is that the stuff that you find in the book of revelation, they actually mm -hmm. pertain to events. Mm -hmm. They're, a chain of events it's a story um yeah. and they fulfilled in korea and this understanding because this person was there when it happened is given to this one person who is this mm. korean he's mm. not even a pastor you don't really call him a pastor instructor aaron right no no he's they they call him you know as yeah just the well they refer to him as like the chairman because he's just the one who's in that position that is leading, you know, at that time, that's just the, the titles here in Korea. They're very, uh, you know, very adamant about certain titles, right? They just give titles um, to make sure things are clear, like they're really into yeah. structure. Um, but he's referred to as, according to the Bible, he'd be referred to as the one who overcomes. That's spoken of in Revelation 2 and 3. To the one who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life. To the one who overcomes, right, I will give the iron scepter, right? He's referred to as the, the new John. Now, why is it referred to as New John? Because 2,000 years ago, Apostle John came and gave the vision, but he's not going to come back alive 2,000 years later. Someone's going to come in the position of Apostle John. 
So that's just what, what you call them to be able to distinguish between if you're talking about Apostle John or if you're talking about the person who, you know, comes as a result of the fulfillment. So those are just titles that he's, you know, given. And they don't usually call people by their name, you know, here in Korea. They call them by a title. It's kind of disrespectful oh, yeah. to call yeah, people yeah, by yeah. their name. It's super familiar if you do that. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. So that's the only reason that, you know, they, I call him the chairman or I'll call him as the promised pastor, you know, um, or they, some people call him the promised shepherd, if you will, because, you know, leading God's sheep, that type of thing. But yeah. So just to, you know, yeah, because I've heard that too, promised pastor, right? That term, because Shin Chenji's understanding is that at the time of second coming, at the time this book of Revelation fulfills, someone is now going to gather people which is basically what a pastor does right mm -hmm. teach the word preach the word gather them um that's that's the end of my sentence is that <laughs> okay <weird>? yeah <laughs> just, a shepherd yeah let me just, let and me to just be say... and to be very clear <laughs> and to be very clear he's it's you know because some people will you know think this he's not jesus right yes. he's not god he's not the spirit of truth he's nothing like that he's simply somebody that jesus promised that needs to come in order for the fulfillment to take place. That's mm. it. Someone has to be there to witness the events and then testify to what they witnessed. Yeah. That's, that's just what it is. So in Matthew 24, he's called the faithful and wise servant who has the, the food at the proper time, mm -hmm. right? The food at the proper time, food in the, in the Bible represents like the word of God yeah. proper time. What's fulfilled at the proper time. That would be like prophecies. Yeah. So the one that's feeding us the understanding of the fulfillment of prophecies mm. at the proper yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be combative. That he doesn't claim, I'm sorry, no, <laughs> uh, not I at mean, all. I, yeah. I just love that, that everyone, at, I mean, or even maybe Chairman Lee himself never really proclaimed that he's like the chosen one or uh, he's like God's son. Nothing like that. No. I mean, of course, Justin, I, I Googled myself and yeah, I read a few bad things, but um it's all about discerning really so yeah. well if anybody ever has any questions like that did this happen is that true just ask you know i mean you can ask me or somebody else but yeah yeah i mean that's that's right now why we're doing what we're doing about being open it, it wasn't always the case we couldn't always be that way because of the persecution i mean there has been active like severe you know persecution in certain countries it's not you can't do that but here in Korea, it actually is the government gets involved, mm. you know, with that type of thing. So yeah. it's been, yeah, it's been a, but if you just think about the the logic of God, you know, God's work being done on this earth, it's never, it's never easy, mm -hmm. right? Satan just doesn't allow God's work to be done. I mean, his job is to destroy, to interfere, to hinder in any way, you know, possible. You look at the time of the first coming, the Pharisees and scribes didn't have anything nice to say about Jesus. Right. Find one of them that was like, yeah, go listen to this guy. He's awesome. Right. He's got some cool teaching. Right. <laughs> the people that were listening there, they were like in Mark chapter, if you look at Mark chapter one, they're like, wow, this guy is teaching some new teachings with authority. Where did this come from? And then later they're like, don't you dare listen to this guy. Yeah. Right? yeah. Anyone who does, we're kicking you out. So mm. it's no different. Yeah. 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 I think that's, I say this quite a bit, so I don't want to repeat it. I feel, like I, I feel like I sound like a broken record sometimes. Like, so I, I love the face. The last so episode. <laughs> Whatever. No, but I think, I mean, I don't, Justin, like when you think about the second coming happening, right? Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that a smooth transition in your head? No. Or oh, it's no, not? Of course not. There's, oh. No, no. Are you kidding me? No. I mean, yeah. uh, like actually to, to prepare for this episode, I, I was watching a, a preaching of John Piper about uh, the second coming um and he john he mentioned piper. second mm. oh i love john piper so white much. hair uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 very passionate preacher mm. um and he mentioned second thessalonians and uh second thessalonians verse one and uh what's this it, like what like what uh instructor aaron was saying you know the persecution and everything like that's that's really a part of it you know there's going to be much persecution uh for for the believers of god you know um wow. and that there will be that the persecution will happen, you know, yeah. it's not. So when you said smooth, I, I was like, no, it's not going to be smooth. Mm. No, mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's going to be quite tribulant, I think. Um, uh -huh. 
And and that's why I was I was telling you guys in this at the start of the podcast, you know, like narrow door. That's a bold it's a right. bold name, you know. This topic alone is you know is bold and and very you know it could be very divisive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, especially if you start to think about, you know, where do I identify myself in this side? Where am I? Am I right. yeah. am I going yeah. through the narrow door? Yeah. Oh, this podcast, they're telling me I'm not in the narrow door. Huh? Right, they're telling right. me, I don't know. You, you sound like Danny on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so is it smooth? No, man. And, but but for me, this is this is where, this is where, you know, grace comes in, you know, and favor comes in, right? And the fact that we can't, we can't, we can't earn our salvation, you know, it's something that's that's given to us, you know, by God. We have to accept it, you know, press our faith, stand on that faith. But you know, you can't be like, all right, here are one hundred rules for you to 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 be saved. If you don't follow all one hundred, then you're screwed, even once. But technically, technically, that is the law, right? Technically, that is the case. But it just so happens that we have we have Jesus who did all of that for us. You know, he's the propitiation for our sins. He removes God's wrath from us, right? And so, so Jesus is, you know, the way, the truth, the light. He's the key, mm-hmm. right? So, so there. I mean, um, so when I think about the second coming, you know, I mean, Chris, as Christians, we should rejoice in the second coming. Right? Yes, I think we that's should. been a big one because yeah. everyone comes here, and. I mean, rightfully so. I think the general mm-hmm. idea is that this is a scary thing. I don't want this to happen in my lifetime. Oh, it's scary. Yeah, sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, especially especially if you think about just the world, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. and I guess that's also why the Bible warns us about being worldly or falling in mm. love with the world too much. Mm-hmm. Because if you're so, I mean, like Jesus even said, uh, you know, if he who loves his, his mother or father more than me is not worthy of me, like how right, right. that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't mean don't love your mother and father. He means, hey, me first. Love me first. This intimate relationship with me first. You know, like that that's what we're about. And then everything else afterwards, right? Uh, Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah. All these will be added unto you. So so for me, it's the, like when you think about the second coming, yes, uh, it's gonna it's gonna look chaotic. That's how Revelation paints it. It's gonna look absolute. There's gonna be chaos in the streets. You know what I mean? People are gonna be like, "What? I didn't think this was real." It's gonna be scurrying. You know what I mean? There's there's panic. There's gonna be panic. You know what I mean? Like this is a this is a world shaking event that we're talking about, right? Um, but but for me, you know, the I just take solace in that, you know, it says in His Word that that if I believe in Him, I profess Him as my Lord and Savior, then I'm on. I'm going through the narrow door. Mm-hmm. You know what and I mean? That you did today. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know? And so when I see that, it's like, it's sort of like when you see Jesus coming down from the clouds and everything, it's like he's not coming to, you know, destroy me. In fact, he's coming to rescue me. Right. You know? It's like yeah. the cavalry is coming in to save us kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, so yeah, I think that's how we should look at it. Um, and, in the meantime, you know, and spread the word. Get, you know, tell people. We're trying. Yeah. We are trying. Well, yeah. Instructor Aaron is trying. Yeah. Um. Okay. Wow. You know what? This ran much <laughs> longer than we normally record, but like I couldn't even stop because it was so riveting. Yeah. And it was so interesting. And before we officially wrap this, Instructor Aaron, any last words? Having heard what Justin had to say. Yeah. No. I. I just really want people to have that kind of, you know, feeling that, you know, God is doing this so that he can save people. Mm. I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? That's the, that's the purpose. But we also always have to keep in mind that, you know, we can't just pick and choose parts of the Bible that we like, Mm. you know, and then disregard the rest. And, you know, what Jesus says is the time of the second coming, it is that narrow door, right? It's not wide. It says many people will search to find it, but will not be able to, right? Many people mm. will try to enter and will not be able to, according to Luke chapter 13. Or if you look at Luke 17, 26 to 30, he says it's going to be like the time of Noah and the time of Lot. And if you think about what was happening at that time, not many people were willing to believe. You know, you mentioned about Jesus coming with the clouds and it says, 
that you know every every nation on the earth will mourn because of him you know they're mourning they're not they're not overjoyed at that particular moment because of the situation of the world because of the situation mm. of the churches and you know the believers yeah and the one that you know sam likes to use a lot you know luke 18 8 you know when the what son of man comes right record, really? I'm telling you no it's perfect it's will the <laughs> son of man will he find faith on this earth so the thing being the reason that revelation is being fulfilled is because god wants everyone to know the truth so that everyone can believe in the one truth mm -hmm. that way you can worship the one true god because god is going to come to his people right god's going to come to his kingdom so he's going to create his kingdom first. How does he create it? Just like everything else through the word. Everything is created through the word. Mm. So those people that are created through the word, they become God's kingdom. And so what is God going to do? He's going to make that truth known. People that choose to believe in it, they will be born again by it. They will be purified by it. Right? First Peter chapter one, verse you know 22. Now that you have been purified by obeying the truth. Right? And that verse in 2 Thessalonians, it's really important because that's actually the process of how Revelation is fulfilled. You know, it says concerning the coming of our Lord, right? Concerning the coming of our Lord. Don't let anyone deceive you by any kind of, you know, letter or anything proclaiming to be up, you know, from us. Because these things will not happen until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. So it says concerning the coming of our Lord, meaning the concerning Jesus, Right? concerning the coming of Jesus, the second coming. And in Hebrews 9, 28, it says that Jesus came the first time to atone for sins, but the second time to bring salvation for those that are waiting for him. Mm. So concerning salvation, right? Concerning the coming of our Lord, concerning salvation, it cannot happen until the rebellion takes place and destruction takes place. And that's exactly how revelation is fulfilled. You have the rebellion, you have destruction, then and only then, you know, a salvation. And it's to those people that are, you know, harvested, sealed, and brought to what's referred to as Mount Zion, because that's where God comes to. So to know all this, obviously, you got to know all the figure of language. You got to know, all the <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just throwing it out there. But it's, it is ultimately that, that salvation plan, but you have to be a part of it. You have to be a part of it. And God is making it known for everybody right now. And that is the teaching that is coming out of Shinshinji, Instructor Aaron, right? Like this is the Amen. testimony yeah. that you have to hear, discern, believe, because as we speak, God's kingdom is being created here on earth, right? Amen. That is what Amen. you're proclaiming right now, right? Even that coming on the clouds has a very deep spiritual meaning that maybe we can leave for next time. Yeah. Yes, mm. we are Ooh. definitely not getting into that today. <laughs> I'm going to wear a mask next time so you guys don't see my jaw drop. <laughs> But you know, wow. I'm very thankful yeah. for you guys. Very thankful. Yeah. This has been such a fascinating conversation. I am shocked that my brain is intact because that was a lot, but it hasn't yeah. exploded yet. Um, but just I'm hungry, you guys. I mean, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm I think, hungry. I, was, I think we burn a lot of calories. I was like, considering snacking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Justin, you've been such a fantastic guest. Oh, too guys. true man too yeah, it was a pleasure right? yeah it was you, so everyone. delightful talking to you and i want to thank you so much for joining us today and, and can we like hang out back. soon justin let's do it you live so close to us let's do it yeah dude. yeah you live two cartwheels away we gotta right. car yeah. Yeah. Sashays, yeah. Sashays, right? <laughs> in Sashays. tagalog the long tempo yeah, okay, yeah. so, two little yeah. scoots on that note, we're going to sashay on out of here, but please, please check out Justin on his podcast. It's called On Call with Justin, Jacko, Danny, and Inca. He also does one called Geek Speak. He's also on YouTube. Please look for Justin Quirino on YouTube. Healing Leaves for Instructor Aaron, the Dog Behind the Human podcast with Tina Ryan. And we want to thank you so much for joining us today on this lengthy but fascinating conversation. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thanks, Justin. We love you. Bye, Bye. everybody.